lot of people who don't enjoy the wonders of caving often ask me what is the most important thing to expect. And I always pretty much tell them the same thing. It's dark. Now, <laughs> I tend to get a few kind chuckles at this point before pressing on with this genuinely serious point. It's dark. It's darker than you'd expect, and it's more than a lot of people have experienced before or even equipped to handle. Once you get deep enough, it's just you and a headlamp for light in most spots. Invisibility is a single beam straight ahead, and for many, that's pretty unsettling. Another thing to keep in mind is that in most cases, it's a tight squeeze. You may walk into a large, open mouth cave, but within a matter of minutes, that can all change and you can find yourself in a passage just barely wide enough for your body, if you press sideways. And those passages could go on for a long time, and some might not even open back up, and you'll have to backtrack. Now, before I get ahead of myself, I really don't want to come off like I'm some caving expert or something. I'm really not. I'm just some guy who enjoys hiking and camping and general exploring, which has led me into a number of caves along the way. I'm sure a more experienced caver could find a million things I do wrong. But all I could say is that well, I've done it, and I've survived without anything serious happening to me or my companions. Now all this preamble is just preventing me from getting to the point. I found something impossible in a cave in the middle of the desert. If it weren't for the certainty of my own eyes, I wouldn't believe myself either, but hell, I know what I saw, and what I intend to see again. You see, there's huge swaths of desert out here in Arizona. There's just miles and miles of red sand, cac cacti, and scrub brush. I've only lived out here a couple of years, and having grown up farther north, this sort of environment is still fresh and exciting for me. And now that the weather has still been relatively cool, I've been taking every opportunity I can to go out and explore the foreign expanse. But if you've never stood in the middle of miles of sand hills, just know that at times, you feel like you're on a different planet altogether. Mars specifically comes to mind, what with the red and all. There's a such persistent emptiness, yet an equally persistent awareness that there are strange and sometimes dangerous life forms around you at all times. You know, think scorpions, tarantulas, poisonous snakes. This is home for all of them. Large plains of dirt and sand will suddenly give way to sweeping plateaus that tower over any surrounding formations. Heat waves wobble in the distance, radiating off the ground. The cacti still get me. Such tall, alien plant life. They'll trick your eyes into seeing people all around you. And not to mention, they have these long-ass needles, burrs everywhere that dig into your skin in seconds. Yeah, well, I learned quickly to travel with tweezers in my bag. Now, it sounds like I'm listing all the reasons you should stay out of the desert, but for all the dangers, it's actually really beautiful. There are mountain views and saguaro forests that will take your breath away. It's so unlike anything you'll see anywhere else. Besides, any place can be dangerous when you're roughing it outdoors. It's all a matter of learning about your environment and how to adjust accordingly to its unique set of challenges. Anyways, due to my relatively short experience in desert conditions, I usually don't set out into the desert on my own. It can be pretty easy to get turned around, and even in the cooler months, this isn't known for being a particularly forgiving environment. I had actually enlisted the company of my good friend Dustin, who was one of the first people I met when I moved down to the southwest. The guy was born and raised here, so I always felt more comfortable having his expertise on board. But luck just so had it when he was unable to come at the last minute. Both of his kids had woken up sick with some stomach bug, and his wife was out of town for a business conference. 
He had my sympathy. I mean, I wasn't one for children, really. Just particularly not young and puking ones. Still, by the time he'd gotten a hold of me, I'd already gotten ready for the hike and figured I could handle one small excursion on my own. Now, I definitely wasn't setting out to look for this cave. Not long after I headed out, the wind began picking up, and I was worried that a dust storm might be rolling in soon. And standing out in the middle of nowhere during one of those is nothing to shake a stick at. So seeing as I was just clambering around the base of a large plateau anyways, I just kept on moving in hopes of finding a small cutout I could press myself into until the wind cleared up. Well, imagine my surprise and happiness upon finding a nice open cave mouth to coop up in instead. Red rock eroded away into a pleasantly deep and tall opening, just where I could stand without crouching. I could already tell that it went further back for quite a ways, and I had my backpack with me, as I always do on hikes, and I had a headlamp, a flashlight, and plenty of spare batteries just to be on the safe side. The fact that I was on my own flared in my mind, but taking a look couldn't hurt, and I had time to kill anyway because, well, what was I going to do, just watch the dust blow over? So in under a minute, I had my headlamp adjusted comfortably and I began to press it deeper into my newfound playground. It quickly went from the wide of the opening to a closer fit, but one that I could still easily walk through without having to turn my body, and all I had to do was crouch a bit and watch my footing on the uneven rock. Now I walked like that for a while, and I know, I was just waiting for the storm to blow over, right? I mean, yeah, I hear you, but... I was also starting to get invested in this cave, and I needed to be sure the dust storm completely passed by me anyways. Even in the best of conditions, it tends to be slow going in these tunnels, but I imagine I made it roughly a mile before things really started to narrow down. The tunnel walls had been scraping up against my arms for some time, but I eventually reached the point where I was either turning sideways or I was turning around. Slinging my backpack off my back in favor of pulling it alongside me to fit through. I decided to press forward. I'd felt more of a pull in this cave than I had in many others I'd explored before. It felt like I was heading towards something. Some set destination. And I just had to go a little longer and press a little further. Even cramped into the claustrophobic passway. It felt nice to be out of the direct sunlight. The cave felt cool and oddly damp. In fact, the farther I pressed, the more humid the air was becoming. And several long minutes of crab walking along, and my clothes were starting to get damp with condensation from the rock. As even more time slipped by, I was beginning to hear and feel a strong, regular breeze. I was completely and utterly confused and by my own curiosity, put me in a sort of a trance that kept me inching forward. The squeeze ended abruptly, and I almost fell flat on my face as the walls pressing in on me suddenly opened up wide again. Wider, actually, than the cave opening. In fact, even without sweeping my lamp back and forth, I had the acute sense that I now stood in a vast and large open area, I pointed my lamp to the ceiling and found nothing. Nothing that the light could reach anyways. It was swallowed up by pitch blackness before ever coming close to a surface. The breeze picked up and pummeled itself over me, leaving me shivering with the strangely familiar taste of salt on my tongue. And all at once, I knew where I'd experienced a place like this. We used to visit family on the Oregon coast uh, quite a bit when I was a kid. And the Pacific Ocean was always cold and ferocious, sending bitter salted winds pounding down upon you. This felt, smelled, and tasted almost exactly like those battered coastlines. But I was in a cave in the middle of a desert. All the same... 
I took a few unstable steps into the wide expanse and focused my lamp forward, as if on cue, as soon as they were illuminated. I heard the crashing of waves upon a rocky shore. I swept my head from side to side, and everywhere my light touch extended this impossible body of water. I could only get a small sense of it, but it was enormous. It was like I had walked out into an ocean shoreline. Now, I can't even tell you how long I stood there, just dumbfounded and utterly convinced that I was losing my mind. But it was long enough for a round, eerie, luminescent sphere to rise far above me. Now, I honestly thought it was the moon at first, except I knew we weren't due for a full moon for a couple of weeks, and this was a perfectly rounded sphere. Well, that and we were still somehow inside of a cave. I knew this because as it rose higher and higher, its light eventually bounced off the craggy roof of the red rock. Whatever it truly was, this mock moon lit up the area around me a great deal. Enough for me to see that I stood on a long, sprawling beach of copper rock with rich red veins that seemed to stretch on either side of me for miles. Enough for me to see the blackness and tumultuous ocean rolling in front of me, going out farther than my eyes could put together. Its waves rolled as of endlessly battling each other, constantly pulled in different directions. I knew then why I had felt the urge to walk on in the cave, why I had felt like I was walking towards something. I had been all along, I knew a certainty. It was here. Whatever this was, and strangely satisfied even though I was completely unnerved by my discovery, I took a seat on a large, flat rock and just watched the waves slam against the shore. The time didn't seem to matter much anymore. Now, questions were swimming endlessly through my mind at this point. What was this place? Was this some phenomenon that I'd just never heard about before, but was still totally explained by science? I don't know, I couldn't be. I would have heard of giant desert oceans before. So did that mean I discovered some entirely new ecosystem? And who did I report that to? Just go find some scientists and say, Oh, hey guys, I found a pretty big thing. Uh, come this way. And then all of a sudden... My questions were cut short by it. God, it was massive. I mean, just impossibly gargantuan. I've seen whales before, you know. Being from around the Boston area, there's a lot of whale watching that goes on. Their size always amazed me, but this, this thing was bigger than any whale I'd ever seen. It breached the surface of the water, and I swear the entire chasm bellowed from its movements. The ocean seemed to flee from it, being thrust so violently aside by its giant form. Then it reared up, or something. I, mean, I don't know how to describe the sound it make. Loud. Bone rattling. Deep enough to make you feel like your body was about to explode. It fell back into the depths with an ear-splitting force. Even farther away from shore as I was, waves were still displaced enough to lap over my shoes. I've looked up all sorts of sea creatures and prehistoric stuff I could since getting home, and there were a few that had similar characteristics. A longer neck, a massive body, you know, that kind of thing, but nothing really matched what I had glimpsed. It was just so big. Big, by the sounds of it. Not very friendly. I got the hell out of there pretty much immediately after that. I'm not one for underwater creatures. I was never a fan. And I was not playing the lost world on my own with a headlamp and a scrapped up backpack of batteries. It took hours to get out. And I could have sworn it only took me an hour and a half, maybe two, to reach the beach. But it took at least three to get back out, and the sun was setting as I crawled out into the cave entrance. 
and I had at least a mile hike back to my car that I managed to make in roughly 15 dedicated minutes, not feeling like taking my chances in the desert at night by myself. The sand worked against me, swallowing each footstep, but I stumbled and leapt my way through it as the light faded around me. Since I've been home, that place is all I can think about. I still haven't told anyone. Well, not until now, anyways. I just don't know what to say. I doubt many people will follow me into a cave after claims of having found some incredible monster in a deep cave ocean in an impossible location where there should only be desert. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. But what if I did go back, and it's not even there? And why has no one ever mentioned coming across something strange in that location? I mean, it's a relatively frequent stop for hikers in the area, so surely someone has seen something. And yet, I haven't found a single thing in forums or online or anywhere else. There are loads of paranormal sites relating to unexplainable things in the desert, but I haven't stumbled upon anything like what I saw. And see, that's part of why I have to go back. I need to see it again, with better equipment this time, obviously. Come better prepared and bring things to document what we find. I'm pretty sure I can at least convince a friend to come along. Hopefully Dustin or maybe even Matt, I don't know. Maybe we can even camp along the beach and explore it more once his wife is back in town. I've never found anything like this. But I need to figure it out. And I intend to do just that.